everyone hello and welcome to my channel dr teacher mom today i have a special guest with me and i'm so we're so privileged to have him on our channel today he's george kochu and he's an english teacher turned entrepreneur so he is the founder of freedompreneur and we're going to have a talk with him today let's begin hi george um could you yeah. please tell me at least about yourself yeah so first of all uh, let me uh, let me thank you for having letting me here on this platform to share my story with you so thank you sofia thank you so much for uh, uh, you know invite me over and i couldn't be happier so uh, pretty much you asked me about my story right the my story of how i started or how or who am i right so to, uh, today i call myself as a freedom runner okay freedom runner you must you might have heard the word freedom runner you might have not heard the word freedom runner in either case i am going to explain who a freedom runner is a freedom runner in my team is a person who loves freedom with and also the same person with an entrepreneurial knowledge of mind basically it is an entrepreneur who loves freedom okay. both financial as well as time freedom so that's what i am standing for and i also help people achieve uh, you know freedom in their life both financially and time freedom as well so that's why that's why i created this uh, whole business uh, with the intention of taking people free okay making people free okay so that's yeah. a quite you know huge concept about making someone free so how do you go about helping um people to be free because we're looking at how do we nurture or yeah. creativity how do we um nurture the dreams that we have and also create a niche for ourselves so what are some of the things that you do as a freedom preneur yeah <laughs> all right in my course uh, you know basically uh, uh, through my course i instruct people i help people in my course i have something called a niche discovery blueprint it's a part of the course wherein i help people uh, rather than rather than I you know, transition people from having no niche to finding their own perfect niche. So it is basically, you know, I help people find out their, you know, macro niche and niche. Uh, I don't know if if you guys have heard about micro niche and micro niche. Uh, basically, micro niche is, is a broad area where wherein you can uh, pitch your business. All right, and most of the people make their mistake of pitching their business in the broad way, so that you 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 just confuse your customers. what you really need to go do is to go down deep into the micro niches for example business and money is is a big micro niche it's a big niche out there okay if you go out, go out there and you tell people that i am a i am a you know money expert people get confused okay rather if you tell that i am a person who okay let us me let me say i am a you know uh freedom runner okay freedom runner i am in the same niche where in a, uh, i help people money and business i am a freedom runner people those who want looking forward to make themselves free by starting their own business understand that okay i am uh, that is uh, uh, whom i want okay that, that's where people get clarity okay this is all about going deep down into uh, into their micro niche and starting their business right there Okay, thanks George. You you yeah. really answered a lot of my questions. You've told me what you're passionate about. Yeah. You've told me um about the problems you solve. Um my next question yeah. is what are your top tips for nurturing one's passion? What would be the top tips that you give if you were supposed to tell someone these are things to do in order to nurture your passion? yeah basically you see uh, most people have this misconception around passion so let me let me debunk that uh, misconception misconception and let me go uh, into your question okay first of all people think that passion is something that you are born with right mm -hmm. most of the people uh, kind of call it as a talent or um, you know predominant quality whatever it is but in my case i believe that a passion can be found rather than having a passion by being born you can find it you can you can discover it and you can go about it you know you can be 100% committed into it see when you are committed 100% into something we can call it as passion so that's that's in my concept that's that's about passion well if you have a if you have found, if you think that you have a passion you have something that you are born with 
great amazing but there are people those who are not clear idea about what they are born with all right so for them they can actually select a, a, a niche a, a select a passion in which they can be they, they, they are interested in first of all they should be interested and then they can go deep down into it uh, you know be obsessed with it so that they can be really really masters in it so that's the one thing uh, finding out one's passion so in order to nurture one's passion i believe that it is learning more about uh, that passion every single day we need to learn that's one thing that makes a person an expert as well as it makes a person you know being attached to that passion that's what i believe and after learning what do you do i i always tell my my participants that you have to go down into the real life and practice it you see and a, a, a knowledge without execution is a delusion Wow, I like right. that quote. I, I love that quote. So knowledge without execution is a delusion. So we need to execute. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. the next one is, um, I don't know if this is going to be an easy one. Describe yourself in yeah. one word. I call myself freedom runner. Easy one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us about yeah. your last project what worked and what did not work yeah i, I see uh, as you have told earlier i was a, an english teacher uh, working in different schools and later on yeah uh, later on i found that okay teaching is amazing but starting something on my own you know is my real thing so i started off looking around uh, what is my real thing then i thought that public speaking is my thing so i start off with a little public speaking thing i posted a lot of videos on the uh, youtube and uh, i expected i had a website and i thought that clients would come to me and uh, nonetheless to you know need, need not needless to speak about it nobody came you know that right so then because you know mostly that, that yeah that business did not work out at all just because I did not have a plan, I did not have a mentor, I did not have a framework of going about. Okay, that, that was a big thing. I had the talent, I had the opportunity, I had uh, everything. In fact, I conducted one program for my own school uh, children. Apart from that, I did not have any other pro program booked for me. Then I thought, okay, really, that may not be the thing. That is when I met my mentor. Okay, and he taught me how to start a business, how to structure it how to you know how to have a niche how to place that business around that niche and how to uh, you know brand yourself and how to bring your message to the whole world and that's when i begin to see, began to see that the whole thing is changing the whole the concept of business is changing on my own head and when it changed here it changed outside there in the real world so if you ask me what did not work the public speaking did not work uh, which i had started on my own and uh, and what what worked mm -hmm. this business uh, you know freedom run business model really works for me okay yeah. I'm, I'm happy that you spoke about the planning you know having you know i think the theme that runs through this um discussion is the fact that you need to have a plan and execute and i think that yeah. ties in with it so that's a message that we're saying you know we have a dream and that's the planning stage once you put that down you need to do some the action is really really important so what is the best advice you have recently received the best uh, best advice i have received from my own mentor is this okay he always says don't be cheap on your journey to greatness okay see what uh, what he means by uh, what he means by saying this is that you know when you are on journey to greatness you have to invest in yourself so when you invest in yourself don't be cheap because you are not going to be cheap you are going to be a great person right so on the journey also should be great and you should be investing really really well on the on the journey to greatness so that's right. one advice don't that I have be cheap to on your journey to greatness <laughs> Right, so the next one is, what is the biggest <laughs> obstacle you have had to overcome yeah. and how did you overcome this? I think you spoke about um, that, you started to talk about that, I think, when you spoke about 
um, the obs well, you, the public speaking that didn't work. Um, yeah. So maybe you could, um, maybe a little more detail in how you overcame that because you see a lot of us will encounter failures along the way. And sometimes, yeah. unfortunately, the failure stops us from going again, from trying again, from getting up, um, from bouncing back, so to speak. So could you just share with us how you overcame this obstacle, please? Yeah, um, you see, my, the biggest ob obstacle was, uh, you know, personal discipline. Okay, like most of the people have, that was my biggest obst obstacle. So I, I, I had trouble, you know, sitting down for like four or five hours a day and working on my craft. And, uh, you know, when I changed that, see, I, I changed it when I met my mentor and I am sitting at home now, locked down, and I thought, why don't I work on my own craft? So I started rescheduling my day. You know, I, I started to follow my mentors exactly what he said. Then I, I see that my uh, really my life changed. And if you say 90% of my whole business was set up last two months, okay? Even though I had joined his uh, uh, program uh, like four or five months before, that did not work out because I, I had trouble with the personal discipline. Mm -hmm. And when I changed that, when I changed that, you know, I thought, okay, if I don't do it for now, I am not going to do it anywhere, anytime, all right? Because I have all what I have, uh, what I needed. I have time, I have, uh, you know, everything, okay? So I, I thought of doing it, so I thought, let us break it. So I sat down and work on it. So the only way to uh, master uh, or overcome the lack of personal discipline is to discipline yourself. You get your feet wet and sit down and get the work going. There is no other way. Okay, motivation works for some time, but, but you know, as we move ahead, what happens is that that motivation goes down and you tend to jump back, right? So if you are, but you need is to have a strong, strong, strong desire. I want to do it. When you have that great why, you know, great desire, you will you will overcome everything. And you, you also need to get on with work. Okay, nothing beats like action. Okay, nothing beats action. So I want you to take action, get disciplined. Try to be disciplined. You will fail many times. Don't worry. Go over it. Try again and again. And one day you are going to get it. it probably, that is what I have experienced from my own experience last two months. Okay. Fantastic. So the final question yeah, thank you. is, what book are you currently yeah. reading? We can't end without talking about our reading as an English um, teacher. So what is the book that you're currently reading? Yeah, right. Currently I'm reading as I mean, an amazing book called, uh, uh, actually I'm reading two. I have just finished one and I, I started off with the two. The, the one called All Marketers Tell Stories by God, uh, Seth Godin. I don't know. I don't know if you can. All right. Uh, yeah, this is the book yeah. I'm reading. Yeah. Seth Godin. Uh, he's an amazing marketer. And the book I have just finished is this one. I, I think everyone should try on it. It is called Superhuman by Dave Asprey. Superhuman by Dave Asprey. It, it speaks about all the biohacking and uh, you know how to keep yourself healthy. And he plans to live like uh, one, 180 years. So he is doing all kind of biohacking on his own body. And he explains that uh, in this book. And I think everyone should read this book, okay? Superhuman by Dave Asprey. Especially so now, with, um, health is a top priority now for us to keep healthy yeah, sure, in sure. light of everything that's happening, the pandemic, COVID-19. So yes, I think that's a good read. Well, George, thank you so much for giving us the time and coming here and stopping by on our channel. We really appreciated it. And thank you so much for uh, having me there on your channel. And uh, and I must say that this is the first interview of this kind. An international person calls me and, you know, uh, you're calling from London, right? Yes, we're actually in Birmingham. So yes, in the UK, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I couldn't be happier, you know, so thank you so much for that too. And I'm uh, happy to connect with you and, uh, you know, hope we will Okay, then. So, bye.
Yeah, bye bye.